morning, everybody. Welcome. I'm Sheila Johnson, minister at Unity Church of Stockton. Uh, we at Unity are into oneness, mind, body, and spirit. A positive path for spiritual living, no matter what path you're on. We accept and value the kernels of truth that are present in all paths, in all religions. We're a spiritual community. We honor the divine presence in all, and we inspire spiritual growth in others through our own awakening. So welcome again to Unity of Stockton. Welcome to my backyard, my patio, Five Mile Slough in Stockton, California. I feel so blessed to be here with you all trying to do this new venue online and want to be sure to pull you all in and welcome you as best we can so welcome have you told your friends you're on Facebook yet because it's helpful to us so if you haven't checked in to Unity of Stockton if you would do that let your friends know you're here everybody's doing it <laughs> so I want to say that the divine in me sees the divine that is in you. Namaste as a start. So my talk today is called an uphill climb. So climb every mountain, ford every stream. Sometimes life can be like an uphill climb, can't it? The struggle, the challenges, and I know I'm not sure what struggles you are going through or have gone through, but we're all experiencing some challenging times right now. So I just want to talk about the myth of Sisyphus by Albert Canoe. Sisyphus was a king of Corinth, and he didn't respect the gods. He stole their secrets. He was consigned then for eternity to be rolling a stone up a mountain for eternity. And the stone would always roll back downhill over and over and over again. And he would have to go back down the hill and push that stone back up the hill again and again. It seemed like there was no meaning to that, no purpose no certainty in that and isn't that like our lives sometimes where we feel like we're just rolling that stone uphill over and over again and we want to know what's the meaning in that what's the purpose there's no certainty in it but I want to say that the return down that hill down that mountain is like our pause, our opportunity to pause. It's our breathing space to just stop and breathe. It's the hour of our consciousness. It's the time when we become superior to that stone. We become stronger than that rock. We become superior to our fate. And it is representative of the human condition in our lives. I don't want to be on a downward note here because there's there's something to be celebrated in all of this. Right now, we're in the midst of a virus situation. We're confined to our homes and some of us are not happy about that necessarily. It's frustrating. It's uh, climbing the walls. It's uh, inconvenient not to have toilet paper and all of that stuff. And I don't mean to downplay that. It's okay to feel whatever we're feeling. We don't want to be in denial about the reality of the situation. Yeah, this is happening. But what we do want to deny is the power that this situation has over us. There are choices that we have to make within this situation. It's what we choose to do with it that counts. We can choose to learn about ourselves and our ways of being. I have an issue right now. I'm trying to learn how to deal with my frustration. 
when things don't go as I want them to or as fast as I want them to. It's time for me to slow down and learn about me. Time for me to grow, grow in my self-awareness, grow in my consciousness, grow into being the best person I can be. I want that. It's time for me to take advantage of the social isolation time. And I hope you are taking advantage of it too. I hope you're doing your spiritual work, praying, meditating, reading on spiritual readings, getting the rest you need, taking care of your immune system, get lots of rest, good sleep, eating well, <laughs> repairing. Using this time as preparation for new beginnings because when this is all over, when this time has passed, and it will, we know that from past experience, this too shall pass, we'll be ready because we're doing our work. We're taking advantage of this time. And as I was doing research for this, I found a cartoon and it has a boss and it, it has to do with Sisyphus and it has a boss who's coming out of his office and he's talk, talking to an employee and this employee is Sisyphus and he's pushing his big stone. And the boss says, hey Sisyphus, when you got a minute, I'd like to discuss this progress report with you. And Sisyphus goes, ruh -roh. well that's Scooby-Doo, uh-oh. <laughs> so he's not making any progress, or so it appears. And I had to laugh about that because I felt that way a lot when I was in seminary. And as many of you know, I was just newly ordained last week. I passed my uh, final ordination interviews. I went over the top of the mountain from spiritual leader into minister. It's just so hard to get used to that, but <sighs> take it in, take it in. And so many times though, during seminary, I did not anticipate that it would be what it was. I, it was a period it, and it was really more about me and my growth than it was about anything else, which is not what I thought when I entered. I thought it was for all of you and everybody else. But we were encouraged more than that. There was no way out of going into, deep into ourselves, into self-awareness, and into finding those things that still needed healing, so to speak, where we still needed to grow. And it was not fun always to look at those parts of me that I didn't want to see that still needed growth. But now looking back, I am so grateful. And we, we call it in seminary, the hidden curriculum. None of us really know what that is and no one ever told us what it is, but I'm thinking that's what it was because that was the true nature of seminary. And I'm ready to step into spiritual leadership like I never have been before. So, so grateful, so grateful. Now, were there days when I said, oh, I'm so angry that I have to do this assignment or that I have to do this self-growth work? I'm so sad because I'm looking inside myself. I'm so frustrated with these papers I have to do. Were there days I didn't go into fear and irritability and disappointment and frustration and anger and but the thing is, in my self-awareness process, I, I was able to see myself doing that and know that I didn't want to stay there long. I didn't want to go into victim consciousness. It's okay to go into the pity pot sometimes, but I didn't want to stay there long. So I did my spiritual work to bring myself out. And I am so glad that I did. So. I didn't want to become a slave to that big boulder. Sometimes we just try too hard. Try too hard, don't we? And it doesn't have to be that way. And we see Sisyphus as, oh poor Sisyphus, destined through eternity to push that rock uphill, oh my gosh. But we need to see Sisyphus as happy. If you can picture a happy face on the top of his head instead of that, oh, that struggle. I know, sometimes that's a lot to expect, but why do we need to do that? Why do we need to see things from a different perspective? 
we may not feel like we have a choice in our current situation or any situation that we're in, but we do have choices. We can find the purpose in any situation. We can find the meaning. Sometimes we want to go to distractions. <laughs> Whatever those distractions for you might be, you know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. But in each and every step, step at a time, we can learn to accept the absurdity sometimes that life feels like. Just acceptance of it is what it is. Of the struggle, the absurdity of the struggle. Just accept the struggle for what it is. We can hold our heads high because we're not defeated. We can make that decision. No wishful thinking allowed. Well, sometimes, but not for long. No avoidance no victim mentality. We become, we choose to become a master of our rock. We choose to embrace this present moment, whatever it is, whatever it looks like, and face it head on. And the facing of our challenges head on is a victory in itself. We did it. There's a song, Miley Cyrus, if any of you have heard it, you may or may not like Miley Cyrus, but this song called The Climb. She's talking about climbing that mountain. And she makes some really good points on it. And she says, it's not about how fast I go up the mountain. It's not about what's on the other side. It's not about those things. It's about each and every step of the way and being in that present moment and making the best of that situation. So what about Hercules? What if there was no lion for him to fight? He would have fallen back asleep and snored his life away. <laughs> and he would not have never developed into that mighty Hercules. And even if he had, what good would it have done him? What good would it have been to have those muscles and that beautiful, marvelous physique without a crisis to stir him into action? And so the same goes for us. Struggles and challenges make us stronger. So Ralph Waldo Emerson is said to have said, life is not a journey, life is a destination. What I'm learning is that he didn't really say those words exactly. No one knows for sure exactly who said it, but what he really said was this. To finish the moment, to find the journey's end in every step of the road, to live the greatest number of good hours, that is wisdom. Each step of the journey represents the completion of the journey. Each step represents the completion. I like philosophy. So what about us? Is it a lack of understanding on our part that keeps us, keeps that stone rolling back down the hill for us? We don't seem to always be getting it. I don't. Sometimes it's the same story over and over again. Always the same stone rolling back down that hill. Mm, having to be pushed up that hill again. Whew. You know, we expect life to always go forward. You know, two steps forward, two steps back. <laughs> For me, it's like on the seminary, I don't think I, or in my life, I don't think I have had a life of letting my stone roll all the way back down the hill. It's like for me, going up the mountain, most of the time, I won't say always, but most of the time, it's been two steps forward and maybe one step back, and then two or three forward, and then maybe one back, but it's been like this, up the mountain. 
So it's not always true that we have to let the stone fall all the way down back down the hill. There are advances, there are declines in our lives. Sometimes we're on top of the mountain and sometimes we're in the valley. Some of us though will let that stone roll all the way down the hill. The drama! <laughs> it doesn't always have to roll all the way back down. How about this? Maybe it was not our stone to roll in the first place. <laughs> Sometimes we're rolling another person's stone. Yeah, I relate to that one. So like Sisyphus, do we not have enough reverence and respect for that God that is within us, that is all around us, that is through us, in us, as us? Do we not have enough respect for that God like Sisyphus? Do we put off our spiritual work? Don't have time right now. Do we place our priorities on other activities in our lives instead of prioritizing our spiritual work first? Do we procrastinate and say, oh, I'll do that later. I'll pray later. Do we use up all of our time? So we say, I don't have time to go into the silence. I don't have time to pray. Use up all of our energy doing other things. I'm too tired. I need to go to sleep right now. I need, I have too much to do. There's no time left. Silence, going into the silence. And that's where we truly access and gain glimpses of divine wisdom, divine understanding, insights from our sacred source, from God. That's the time when we learn how, to, when we're pulled higher to see things in a different way. Oh yes, sometimes we go back into our heads, try to figure things out using our intellect staying in our heads trying to figure it all out and you know what we don't have to do that so in the revealing word which is a metaphysical dictionary written by one of our co-founders Charles Fillmore he says divine wisdom and divine understanding divine wisdom divine understanding comes from the spirit of the Christ within us and all around us and the price we have to pay for conscious attainment of divine wisdom and divine understanding, yes, there is a price to pay. And that is, we have to let go of our human self, our personal self, and its limited beliefs. We have to let go of the human self and take a back seat to that divine. So, be still. Be still and know. Let's take this as a time to go into prayer and meditation. And I would like to read from Unity's Daily Word today. It's perfect. And this will be our prayer and our meditation as I read this Daily Word. You will go into the quiet and into the silence with me. I invite you to do that. Today's daily word is inner peace. I find the peace of God in the silence within me. The Hebrew scriptures tell the story of the word of God telling the prophet Elijah to stand on the mountain before God for God is about to pass by. As he waits, Elijah fails to find God as he endures a wind strong enough to split mountains, an earthquake, a fire. Then, after, then, Elijah discovers God in a sound of sheer silence. Sometimes chaos surrounds me as I try to find the peace of God. I persist in my efforts as I confront inner storms, fires, viruses, 
earth wakes as I search for peace. Like Elijah, I remain steadfast in faith, undisturbed by what is happening around me. I wait for distractions to pass. Then and only then, peace is mine. So the biblical quote that supports today's daily word is from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 12. And after the earthquake, a fire. But God was not in the fire. Only after the fire, then a sound of sheer silence. I invite you then to just take the time you need to come out of prayer, out of meditation, out of our time in the quiet. And I hope this has been a meaningful experience for you. It sure has for me. I so treasure being here with you all. I so treasure that you're here. And I love the way we still connect through cyberspace and we're still saying hi to each other and namaste to sit to each other namaste the divine in me sees the divine in you this is a time where I need to talk about the M word the money word I don't like to talk about that but we at Unity of Stockton still need to pay our bills even though you're not here. So if you find it within your heart to send us something to help us maintain during this time of social isolation, it would be used for such a great purpose, a purpose that's greater than we are. And on our dollar bill, it says, in God we trust. We affirm our partnership with divine source. Whatever we give, we know brings increase of some kind. It may not always look like the increase that we expect it to or we think it should. So as you decide to send us an offering, we can bless our offering before we send it. There are several ways you can do that. You can mail it to our address at 2027 West March Lane, Suite 6, Stockton, California, 95207. Or you can drop it in our mail slot in the door. Or some people use Venmo to Sheila Johnson. And others send money direct from their bank. And others go onto our website and use PayPal, www.unityofstockton.org. So we are so grateful for any that you may send. I'd like to end with the peace song. And this is the version that so inspired Pope Francis at the 9-11 Memorial and Museum.
God's children, all of God's children say, Amen.